Hello all, my name is James. Today we're going to be going over section 1.5 of the Advanced Engineering Mathematics textbook, 10th edition. This is going to evolve ODEs, linear, non-homogeneous and homogeneous ODEs. I hate long intros, so let's get right to it. Okay, this is question number three of section 1.5. We're given this ordinary differential equation, y prime minus y equals 5.2. The trick behind this is to use the method of using the integrating factor that we, that we learned about in the prior section, 1.4. It simply states that the integrating factor is equal to e raised to the integral of p of x. Now in this ODE here, first off, since we can put it in the standard form, which is what this is, where we have some function p of x multiplied by y equally, plus the y prime, equaling another function of x on the right side. Here 5.2 is a function of x as well as the negative 1 that's being multiplied against the y. Even though they don't have x or being multiplied by x, they are functions of x. So it is in the standard form here. And since it is in the standard form, uh, this ODE is considered linear. Um, if you had another y over here or if this was y squared, something along those lines, then it wouldn't be linear. And also since the right side, this r of x is not zero. This is uh, what we are called non-homogeneous or non-homogeneous. If it was zero, it would be homogeneous or homogeneous. So here we're asked to find the general solution. We've got to use this integrating factor here. So that would be the first thing to find, to find the integrating factor. Now the book, this book, uh, Advanced Engineering Mathematics, uses f of x, like big f of x. I don't, I don't like using that. That confuses me and such. So I'll, I'll simply just call it I. Uh, first, let's find P of x. P of x right here, like I said, is negative 1. So E raised to the negative, the integral of the negative is just dx, really. The integral of negative dx is merely negative x. That's the integrating factor. And I'll show you how that helps right now. Now, many different solution manuals, uh, including Chegg, I believe, uses different different methods of, of using this. But the number one, or the, the best method I've found, is just, you're supposed to multiply this integrating factor times y is equal to the, the integral of this right side times the integrating factor. Like that, the right side of the equation. Likewise, if you differentiate both sides, the dif the derivative of of y prime times integrating factor is going to be equal to the right side times integrating factor. But this 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 way is pretty simple. So since we find the integrating factor, which is e to the negative x, we can go ahead and do that. E to the negative x multiplied by y. It's going to be equal to the integral of the right side, which in this case is simply 5.2 times e to the negative x. Let's not forget the dx. Now, let's go ahead and evaluate this integral on the right side. Fairly straightforward. The 5.2 comes out because it is a constant, leaving us with just this. Now, e to the x, the integral on the derivative is e to the x. But since we have the negative, we would divide by that, making it negative. So 5.2 times negative e raised to the negative x plus c, as we know. We'll call that c1. Constant, it's any number. We're looking for the general solution, so it is going to have some constant, or it's going to have c representing every constant uh, known to man. So, of course, this left side, just bring it all the way down. And we can distribute. So it's going to be negative 5.2 times e raised to the negative x plus 5.2 times c1, since we don't know what c is, 5.2 times a million times 6 million times a billion times some constant we don't know is another constant that we don't know. It's not necessary to put the little subscript 2 or 1. It's just showing you that this constant is different from this one. Well, who cares? It doesn't matter. So now we're almost home free. So we have everything here, and we can divide everything by e raised to the negative x. 
we'll use a different color. Cancels here, cancels here, and we're just left with that constant being divided by e to the negative x. So I have y of x on the left side is equal to negative 5.2, just negative 5.2 because it's that canceled out, plus some constant c times, uh, or divided rather by e to the negative x. You could leave it like that, or I like making it look better. You know, who cares, right? Negative 5.2 plus c2. Since we know that the in the denominator we have a negative exponent, we can bring it to the numerator by switching the sign. Doesn't matter if it's a negative or positive, rather. We can move anything from the denominator to the numerator by switching the sign of the exponent. So negative goes to positive. And that right there will be our general solution. Again, it is a general because we have a constant. It would be explicit if it was like 2 e to the x or 3 e to the x. No constant. It's exact. It's explicit. It's general because, you know, we weren't given any initial conditions. Had we been given, oh, you know, a y of 0 equals 7 or y prime of 0 equals, you know, negative 2, then we'd be able to solve for that constant and it would be explicit. But since we don't, that's what we're left with. That is the solution to this ODE. Now we can try a separate topic if you so wish to.